This is the Hasidic Story Project with Barack Holman, podcasting from Jerusalem, Israel. To become a supporter of this podcast, please go to HasidicStory.com. H-A-S-I-D-I-C Story.com. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. You'll never know. Because this is a little bit of a longer story than usual, I'm going to record it in two parts. Someone once came to the holy Rebbe Nachman of Breslov, and he said, How loud is a person supposed to shout when he davens? And Rabbi Nachman answered him, You have to pray so loud that no one can hear a thing. Everyone knows that the holy Rebbe Yisrael of Rizhin was one of the greatest Rebbe's, the highest of the high. And unlike other Rebbe's, when he davened, he didn't make a sound. He didn't move. He didn't bend. He stood there straight like a tree. And if you stood right next to him, you couldn't even hear him whispering. He was just still and silent. But when he finished davening, on the floor where he was standing was always a pool of tears. So, you see, all of the great rebbies, they all had different ways of giving over their teachings to their Hasidim. Sometimes they would give lessons where people would sit around and they would give it over in a formal way. Sometimes they would give over stories or parables. But there was one very special rebbe the Heilige Reb Menachem Mendel of Vorka, who was the younger son of his father, who was also Rebbe, the Holy Reb Yitzchak of Vorka. And this Reb Menachem Mendel of Vorka was different than everyone else. When he became a Rebbe, he never gave over classes. He hardly even spoke at all. The way Reb Mendel had taught was through silence. And so they called him the Silent Rebbe, the Silent Tzadik. And you know, you have to be kind of a special person. If you're going to be a chassid of a Rebbe who's silent all the time and hardly ever spoke, because who wants to sit in a room with a teacher? Doesn't matter how holy that teacher is. A teacher who doesn't say anything. People would get impatient and they'd say, what's with this rabbi? I came here to learn some Torah, to get some spiritual guidance, but he hasn't said a single word. I'm not learning anything. I'm just wasting my time. And people would get up and walk out and never come back. And there were others who didn't understand why Reb Mendele was silent all the time. They figured he's silent because he doesn't know anything. He's got nothing to say. So the straight Hasidim would look down on Reb Mendele, and they wanted nothing to do with him. But still, Reb Mendele had many Hasidim, and these were very special people. Many of the Hasidim of Reb Mendele were simple working Jews, and it seemed like they were ignoramuses, amaritis. They didn't know anything. But the truth is that they were filled with the greatest holiness. They would sit with their Rebbe, sometimes for 10 or 12 hours at a time, listening intently. You know what they were listening to? They were listening to his holy silence. And the whole time, no one in the room coughed. Nobody stirred restlessly. No one even had to go to the bathroom. Everyone was mamish, elevated to such a high level, they felt like they weren't even in this world anymore. It said that on one Shavuos, Reb Mendele sat with his Hasidim all night without saying a single word. And just before the sun came up, when it was time to start davening, the Rebbe finally spoke and this is what he said. Everybody knows the end of the Shema Yislam prayer. We say, Hashem Echad, that God is one, meaning that God is everything and everything is God. And Reb Mendele said, happy is the person who mamish knows in the depths of the deepest part of his being, that Hashem Echad really means that God is everything. In the Hasidim that were there, they said when their Rebbe said these words, every cell in their bodies knew, they really knew that God was running the world. And so for those who were able to be Hasidim of Reb Mendele of Vorka, he was mamish on the level of the Baal Shem Tov. From the time Reb Mendele was a very young boy, he had a great love for horses. And he had this strange custom when he became the Rebbe. Every day, at exactly two o'clock in the afternoon, he would harness the horses to his carriage, take the reins into his own hands, and start going for a drive all by himself. The Hele Gebal Shem Tov once said that you can tell the character of a person by seeing how they behave with animals, and especially with horses. Anybody who can't talk to a horse 
for sure can't talk to a human being. So Mendele took it a step further. He never touched his horses, he never whipped them, he didn't need to speak to them. From the moment that he picked up the reins in his holy hands, the horses simply started walking. Without any instructions, they went exactly where Reb Mendele wanted them to go. And this was such an incredible scene that hundreds, maybe even thousands of people, would wait outside a stable every day at two o'clock in the afternoon to watch Reb Mendele go off on his drive. And you might think that once he left, the Hasidim would go about their business. But no, everyone who had come were really waiting for Reb Mendele to return. And they said, every time that the Rebbe came back, no matter how many times they'd seen this before, people were shaking in awe because the Reb Mendele Vorker, who had come back from his ride with the horses, was never the same person who had gone out a few hours before. He was different. He was on a higher level. He was holier. And everyone could see it just by being in his presence. Reb Mendele's holy father, the Rebbe Reb Yitzchak Vorker, knew that his son wasn't going to be able to get along so well in this world. And he was worried about his son, because he said, how was his son going to make a living and support his family? So when Reb Mendele was only 14 years old, his father, Reb Yitzchak, arranged a shidduch with him, with a very sweet and holy girl, who happened to also be the daughter of a very rich man. Now this girl's father was also a Hasidic Jew, but he was one of the straight Hasidim. He wasn't a Hibbi Hasid, like some of the Hasidim of the Vorka Rebbe. But he was so delighted that his daughter was going to be marrying into the family of the great Tzaddik Reb Yitzchak Vorker. And he started telling everyone that his daughter's going to marry the son of the Rebbe. But then he started asking some of the other Hasidim around town what they thought of Reb Mendele, his future son-in-law. Reb Mendele, one of them said, you mean the one who never speaks? Well, at least he's honest. I mean, he's got nothing to say and nothing worth hearing. So he never opens his mouth. Another person laughed and he said, he doesn't only not open his mouth. He's never opened a holy book, a safer in his whole life because he knows nothing. And a third person said, and not only that, instead of sitting and learning like a respectable person, he runs around all day in the forest. He thinks he talks with horses. He's got nothing to say. Everybody knows he's had a pet goat since he was seven years old. <coughs> and they start laughing. The rich man had heard this and he said, that's enough. My daughter is not marrying a crazy person like Reb Mendele. He went into the Rebbe, Reb Yitzchak Vorker, and he said to him, the wedding is off. He started telling him some of the crazy things that he heard about his son, Reb Mendele. And the Heilige Reb Yitzchak Vorker hears this and his face turns red. And then it becomes white, white like snow. And then it's red again. And then white, and back and forth like this, again and again and again. Red, white, red, white, what's going on here? And then finally he turns to the wealthy man, whose daughter is going to marry his son. He says, my friend, I have to tell you, you're risking your life when you speak that way about my holy son, Reb Mendele. I dare you even think, much less say, that he's not worthy to be your son-in-law. Your mom is playing with fire. I want you to know that Hashem was ready to take your soul back up to Shemayim for insulting such a tzaddik like my son. And I had to work very hard just now to save your life. Now it was the rich man whose face had turned white. And the holy Vorka Rebbe, he said, you have to promise me you'll never say anything like this again. And in return, I'll make you a promise. Not only will you be proud of your future son-in-law, Reb Mendele, in this world, you'll be even prouder of him in the world to come. Now everybody knows that Rabbi Yitzchak Vorker's oldest son, Rabbi Yaakov David of Amshinov, was also a holy Rebbe. But he wasn't like his brother, Rabbi Mendele. Rabbi Yaakov David gave over his teachings in the normal way. He spoke, and so he had lots of Hasidim. And these were straight Hasidim. And the two groups of Hasidim, of the two brothers, were always making comparisons to one another. Several years after their father, Rabbi Yitzchak, had left this world, there was a big Vorker family wedding. Both the Rebbe's were there, Rabbi Yaakov David and Rabbi Mendele, with all of their Hasidim. They all came together for the family wedding. And at the meal after the wedding, the holy Amshinova Rebbe, he gets up and he gives over these amazing teachings of Torah. And he was a real Rebbe, a very holy and very learned person, so he had a lot to say. But Rabbi Mendele was just silent as usual, didn't even open his mouth. And after Birkat Amazon and the Sheva Bachot, the special blessing said after a wedding meal, Rabbi Yaakov David's students started whispering amongst themselves. It's such a pity, you know, such a shame. Our Rebbe, the Amshinover, he knows so much. 
and he gives over such high teachings, but his younger brother, he just sits there silent. He doesn't say a word. It must be true what they say about him that he doesn't know anything, because he doesn't have anything to tell us. And some of his Hasidim think he's as high as the Helig Abal Shem Tov. It's crazy. Now, Reb Mendelis Hasidim knew that just to be in the same room with the silent Rebbe was the highest of the high. But the Amshinovers followers, they needed words. Silence wasn't enough for them. And so they started gathering around Reb Mendele and making fun of him, saying that he should at least say something new. Tell us a word. Let's hear something come out of your mouth. And Reb Mendele didn't pay attention to their jokes or their pressure. He just glanced up at a large clock at the wedding hall and he said, Gewalt, look at the time. It's after two o'clock in the morning. Who can start giving over Torah at such an hour? But it's also too early to go to sleep on such a special night like this. So what are we going to do? I know. Let's play cards. And the Amshinover Hasidim looked at him in horror. And then they turned around and walked out, shaking their heads. I, this silly, silent Rebbe, wants to play cards. And after the last one of the Amshinover Hasidim had left, Reb Mendele turns to his Hasidim, who of course were still there waiting for him, and he said, close the door. I don't want to be disturbed. And so one of the Hasidim gently closed the door. And Reb Mendele, in his Hasidim, sat there for hours in absolute silence. That was part one of the stories of Reb Menachem Mendel of Orca. Part two is coming right after.